the functional <laughs> of periphery and share the good practices, including holding the workshop to promote the collaboration with African countries, trying to expand rice production and international organization, and to disseminate the output of working group, working group one activities through the website. So it's put here, the discussion item may include quantification and evaluation of the value of monthly functionality at model site, study and compilation of good practices on on-farm and agriculture management for enhance for enhancement of multiple function of paddy field, commercialization and innovation in rice farming, food value chain, private, public private partnership in rice farming, food value chain, and rice um, food value chain in infrastructures. I think uh, our, our Philip from Japanese will present a, a bit on this. The private, uh, private, public private partnership in in food value chain in infrastructures and other resources, social economic effect of uh, FEC and value added in value farming and food waste um, fundraising. So with that in place, uh, we, I would advise the countries to present the reports on activities or whatever uh, experience they are going through from uh, 2019 and 2020 for the for the for this meeting. And after this, they, they, they have to present their action plan for phase six, uh, two, 2000, uh, 2020 and 2020. So with that, I, I, I end my introduction and I would like countries to present their uh, last, last uh, previous experience under this uh, under this uh, working group. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. I think uh, uh, their Thailand uh, group has also joined. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Yes, Dr. Zahid. And uh, shall we start from Sri Lanka? Okay. You are Welcome from Sri Lanka because your presentation may be longer. Please, Sri Lanka. We have a presentation, so we will start off with the presentation. Good day, everybody. Now uh, we are from Sri Lanka, and uh, this is our. Uh, uh, we'll start from the 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 the, the progress part, uh, from, from the, the for a period of 2019 to 20. Right. 
and uh, uh, th th this is how we see this multifunctionality. Uh, there is a main function of PEDI that is food and new nutrition and uh, there are some other ecological services and uh, as far as the Sri Lanka is concerned the flood control drought mitigation soil conservation and carbon <coughs> are, are, are dominant we believe and for, for the other functions like they are regulatory functions cultural functions and support services so right uh, food value chain has uh, three, uh, se uh, three, three domains we believe. First one is the input control. Second one is the production process of paddy. Third one, third part is the supply chain that is from producer to the consumer part. And uh, paddy based ecosystems. So we, we, we are highly concerned about the plant management, soil and water management and supply chain management. Yes, this is multifunctionality. <laughs> Uh, these are the activities that we have uh, carried out, capacity development in community participation in ecological farming, uh, prevention work for uh, migratory pest, that is a regulatory function, eco-friendly integrated wheat management systems, that's also a regulatory function that we have implemented, and uh, introduce um, phosphorus biofertilizer, uh, that's also support for the multifunctionality of paddy. New regulations to protect uh, paddy ecosystems. Uh, that's also regulatory functions. Uh, we have started the, the, the thing called NIAS, nationally important uh, agricultural heritage systems to identify the important eco paddy based ecosystems. Uh, the next one is the database on paddy, paddy lands and buffers. There are in environmental buffers for the paddy tracks in Sri Lanka. And we, we try to identify, there are some abandoned tanks, abandoned paddy lands, and we try to identify the reasons for the abandonment. That's also support function. And we also introduce soil health card. That's also support function, we believe. Right. And um, uh, from the food value chain, so here is mostly on the uh, supply chain management side. Uh, strengthen multi-purpose cooperative systems that we have initiated. Uh, traditional rise as agribusiness systems, that's all on production side. Dissemination of soil tolerant rice, that's also on production side. Study on paddy yield potentials and new plant varieties, that's also on production side that we have started. So these are the, the main key activities that we have conducted during the period of 2019 to 20. These are our proposals for 21-22. And from the multifunctionality side, so uh, uh, yes. Uh, We start from the food, uh, food FVC means the food value chain management. Uh, first, start from the reduce uh, post harvest losses. So we, we would like to, uh, to to introduce from this year onwards. We we, we would like to emphasize on these matters. Uh, so we have a thing called agrarian services center. There are 562 agrarian services centers providing support services for the this is a government uh, non uh, semi government uh, organization uh, providing services for the farmers in this country, the main body, and we want to convert this agrarian services center as a one stop shop to facilitate the paddy based irrigated agriculture in this country. And especially we are looking for the e-governance in food value chain. The people, the farmers will not necessarily to come and work with, come and, you know, work with directly with the direct contacts with the, with the officials are not necessary. This is not e-government, e this is e-governance. That is really a, you know, business process re-engineering. So we would like to re-engineer the entire process of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, paddy farming uh, as a pilot, uh, in, in this year and also introduce information circulating systems now it is uh, more on with pap with, pap with papers now we want to have some e-governance procedure uh, for information circulating system from farmer to 
government state and from states to farmers and also re relational database on paddy farming paddy based uh, farming in this country and also we are looking for a uh, web portal on fvp so food value chain of paddy in this country and especially we are, we are our concern is on value addition for paddy uh, farm integrated uh, so now in this country the individual farm organizations are in in, in action but we wanted to have an integrated farm organization system at a bigger scale and we want we, we 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 want them to come out for for get, get into this uh, uh, food value chain and you know, to operate some marketing centers like you know these type of pilot projects we want to uh, to commence from this year onwards uh, strengthen farm, we have a farmers bank but uh, not so strong we want to strengthen the farmers bank to provide financial support for the farmers and a ppp for we have that fair amount of abandoned paddy lands in this country uh, we wanted to have the public private partnership to recultivate the abandoned paddy lands uh, studies and research that we are proposing uh, so there are number of uh, ecological services that we have identified but unfortunately not quantified not re no research have been carried out so far. We wanted to quantify groundwater recharge and flood control. That flood control is one of the major benefit that we are achieving out of paddy farming in this country in, in valley, uh, the floodplain areas. You have to quantify the water footprint and carbon footprint of paddy for Sri Lanka uh, within these two years and study on traditional land tenure. There are special type of traditional land tenure in this country that uh, tremendously support the, the sustainability of paddy farming. So we wanted to study and conserve those systems, identify and conserve nationally important uh, paddy and water heritage system that we have already initiated. And uh, so we wanted to, to strengthen this activity and go proceed. And also collaboration with researchers to provide information on aspects related to the economic and adaptation of technologies. And this is the uh, next one is the plant management side to make available uh, improved rice varieties for farming, uh, for farmer acceptance, to assure availability of quality seeds for, 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 for the farmers to make available associated technologies for high productivity and profitability, to make available eco-friendly plant protection technologies. To, now we have, these days we are highly concerned about the organic agriculture. So we wanted to promote organic agriculture in paddy farming, adaptation of climate smart technologies at farm level uh, in uh, paddy, ag pad, uh, irrigated paddy ag agriculture in this country and establishment and implementation of quality uh, uh, process standards. Uh, this is uh, PGR means plant growth regulators and uh, enhance availability of PGR materials and develop national standards for the PGR and also promote uh, DNA uh, fingerprints, uh, gene discovery and pre beading technologies and those are the uh, the summarized uh, activities that we are really looking for uh, looking to uh, to implement in 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 the period of 21 and 22 from sri lankan side thank you very much Uh, Dr. Abdullah, you have to unmute yourself. Yeah. Before I go further, I would like to ask Thailand members whether there are any uh, reports to be re presented to be presented in this meeting, Thailand. Thailand, please reply whether you have any presentation for this meeting. I think the Japan, uh, they have a presentation. 
so we can uh, upload the slides and i think uh, they will be able to deliver the presentation now uh, i would request thailand group to unmute yourself please hello can you hear me yes, yes uh, thailand do have a report um but i have to share the screen just a moment so if if so we would uh, advise uh, we, 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 we would uh, like to invite thailand representative to present their reports thank you yes 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 uh, uh, just wait for the PowerPoint, please. Yeah. The Japan representative of Thailand, eh? Yeah. <laughs> okay, just go on. So, hello everyone. Today, uh, Mr. Wasan Bunker, uh, the president of InWeb, is here with me also. Okay. And Mr. Thirapong Tang Sombun, he is the uh, he is the, um, the 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 head of the working group one. He bye assigned bye. All, me to all, report. All our Thailand friends, bye bye. And Mr. Silod. Silod, <laughs> Silod. Yeah, he's here also. Is he so. around? Uh, okay, good. Up, up, gong, han, pay ha, chan, lady. Okay, you can just, just continue. Moment, uh, we'll be setting it up. How young? Huh? WG1. Five WG1. Oh, five you got five. 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 Invite Japan. Okay. We have we invite Japan. Thank you. Hello. Give me one minute. So so we will upload the Japanese presentation. Ah, this is Japanese presentation. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Good afternoon, we are from Japan. First, uh, we want to introduce the activities of Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries in Japan related to Working Group 1. We have contributed to strengthening the disaster prevention and mitigation cap capabilities of local communities by promoting efforts to appropriately adjust water levels in Pacific and irrigation dams as a multiple function of those fields and irrigation and drainage facilities. Pad field dams have the effect of increasing the capacity of storing rainwater in paddy field and reducing the risk of flooding damage in downstream areas. We also have carried out infrastructure development for building food by chain and strengthening production systems. Please, uh, next, next slide. Thank you. Next, we will share INEP Japan's efforts in Japan for discussion in working group one. First, we will work to strength, strengthen agricultural competitiveness by reducing production costs through the concentration and consolidation of farmland and promotion of smart agriculture. Then we will work to strengthen profitability by shifting to high yielding crops and the establishment of their brands. Then we will work to secure income and employment opportunities, creating conditions for people to continue living in rural areas and creating new movements and activities that support rural areas. We will work to strengthen agriculture and rural communities by developing drainage facilities 
disabled and watershed flood control to cope with frequent and severe disasters. Finally, we will work on strategic conservation management and flexible water management for irrigation facilities with information and te communication technology and other new technologies. Thank you for all listening. Okay. Any question from other participants? I got one question because during the NARA meeting, we have uh, your Thailand who try to promote the use of uh, cutting system for pedifin so that we don't need to do land preparation for many times, but just uh, cut the, the, the paddy trunk to the ground level, put the fertilizer and so on, and we just uh, planting paddy without land preparation or what, and we can reduce the uh, time of uh, paddy, product, uh, paddy planting which is really reduce the farmer's uh, effort. And also we can have more season, party season, maybe three or four season in a year. Uh, can I have that uh, explanation on that uh, endeavor? Thank you. Shall we go to the next country? Sure. Yeah, the Thailand uh, group, please unmute yourself and then you can make your presentation. The can a uh, representative from Thailand uh, give some explanation on that? Because for me, that was one of uh, important innovation in rice cultivation in, 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 okay. Okay. I have to unmute. They have to unmute. They have not uh, unmuted. So we don't. The Thailand group has not unmuted themselves, so we don't know whether they are saying anything or not. Doctor, doctor, uh, Yazid, Yazid. Until they get ready, shall we invite uh, Professor Singh from India? He's also waiting for 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 presentation. I think some kind of uh, uh, ideas to be delivered. Shall we ask uh, India to? Uh, come out with their proposals. Yeah, this is the Thailand presentation. Okay. Thank you. Maybe we have those information in this paper. Thank you. You have to request them to unmute because they are still muted. Uh, can you see the presentation on screen? It's not visible. You have to share screen. Okay. Okay. Okay, so <laughs> sorry about the te technical difficulty. Um, 
My name is Nopadon Kosuan. I am the head of the working group number three. But today, uh, Mr. Wasan Bunkert, president of INREP Thai, he assigned me to report the country report for working group one. So um, the main activity in Thailand that uh, we implemented, there are two things. First one is the um, alternate wet and dry. Um, we, we want to uh, do the party using less water. So the alternate wet and dry, uh, it started by the weekend holiday farmer uh, years ago, and then um, it got extended and expanded. And Royal Education Department, they uh, produced the handbook, how to implement this technique. And uh, it went over into the WhatsApp in Second World Education Forum, and they got the award. Um, so, so right now, this uh, AWD, uh, AWDI technique, it was adopted by the GIC, or the International Organization in Germany. And they granted the fund more than 16 million euro um, to uh, do the pilot project in Thailand right now. And I will tell you later about that. The second thing is the rice tuning technique. Um, this one is adopted from the Salibu paddy field uh, that they do it in Indonesia. And Thai adapt that technique and uh, alter that technique to be ourselves. And this technique, um, we reported in, in web community three years consecutively. And today, we still implement that. And the, the, the major benefit from the rice tuning is um, we, it can preserve the genetic of rice. The seed purification, it uh, went up from 97. Um, right now, it's more than 99% lead peel from, from the, uh, the, the, the rice seed that got from that technique. So before the meeting, we held our own meeting also. Uh, we, we plan what we're going to do with WG1, WG2, WG3. And right now, we're in different room reporting our country report. And in our ID, we want to keep going on uh, implement the, the rice paddy using less water. But on top of that, we will do the land leveling because irrigation water nowadays, uh, the irrigation water in the, in the land that is not level, we lost irrigation water about 10%. So right now the GIC, support that idea and they offer the laser land leveling for the farmer who want to join this program. This is the update and um, the program you can look online is called Thai Rice Nama, okay? Thai Rice Nama and they also divided into three working group. The first group is the mitig mitigation of the technology, alternate wet and dry land laser leveling and uh, how they um, manage the uh, slash and burn using the rice tuning technique instead. WG2 um, for GIC, they uh, extend, extend and expand the model. But what different is WG3? GIC, WG3, um, they cope with the production for the rice field that use such technique. So um, GIC will provide them the, the, um, the form that will take that, take that from, from the, 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 the paddy field, uh, the product from, from the Thai rice nama and sell it internationally. So any farmer in Thailand that joined this program, sorry. Any farmer that joined this program, they are guaranteed that their rice will be sold 
uh, crew uh, GIC supported firm, and they even have their 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 um, their brand product. This is the it's called the Earth Hacking Rice. That's mean uh, the rice use less water to produce. So um, high rice nama, the ultimate goal is to reduce eighty percent, okay, of the GHG gas that produced from the paddy field by two thousand thirty, totally comply with the SDG. And um, right now we are entering the the third year of 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 the high rise nama. So two years left is five year project. Okay. And this also so far, I will not take, uh, talk about this because you can look it up online. The second, um, the second beside the rice is the, the model that um, is being award from uh, Thailand uh, best practice recently. It's called the Adapted BRM Innovative Plan Toward Flood and Land Management. BRM is Bang Rakam model. Banglakam is the, the area in Thailand that always flood. It's half heavy flood every year. So people that live inside that area, they, they're really desperate. They know that flood's coming, the flood will damage their, their paddy field. So ID come up with the Banglakam model. What we do, we, we shift the harvest time to to earlier by one month. That way, when you harvest early one month before the flood came, you can save your uh, your rice seed, right? And after that, let it flood. Why? Because during the flood, during the inundation, we introduce the aquaculture, vegetable, animal that can live through that inundation period. And when, then when the water start to recede, um, they can harvest their product. So they turn flood water into benefit water. And people that live in Bangalakam, they, they kind of happy because um, now they're waiting for flood. And what in WebTai involved in this um, new model? We, during the dry season, um, we introduce them to um, practice the alternate wet and dry paddy. So, and this paper um, was submitted uh, in ICID also. And that's pretty much about the WG1. Thank you for your attention. If you have any question, please shoot. We have a question from Japan. Yes, please. We think it's really interesting that the system that you Thailand introduced uh, about uh, um, planting the planting the lights earlier and um, after that uh, farmers are starting doing Aquaculture, uh, fish, fishing? Fish, yeah. Um, um, uh, my, my question is. Okay, go ahead. My question is how, how do you, how do you expect when the, when the fraud it's coming. How do you how do you know when the when the flood coming? Oh, the flood. Um, Nam Thua man ma pen vela, sai mai ka tuk pi a. Um, we uh, in Banglakam. Um, at the beginning of August is always happen, and the way we uh we cope with that is we have the irrigation structure also. To, to, uh, to divert water the, the way that we wanted to, to get into that area of vaccination. 
So about August, that's when it happened every year. And okay. uh, this, this, okay. And this government funded the, the seeding, the baby fish that we seed into the flat water is supported by government. Okay, thank you. Do you, do you think the, the timing of the flood uh, would be earlier or be late because of the climate change. Um, the, the area that uh, we implement this model right now is always flat. Even if it's climate change, it will be flat anyway. And it's inside our irrigation area, so that is easy to manage because they, they have water user groups established already too. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. So, who's the teller? Uh, yeah. How how satisfied we, we are you with the Salibu system? This is uh, uh, should be promoted in future or no potential? Thank you. Uh, the 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 Salibu, the adapted Salibu uh, is called the uh, adapted riser tuning. Yeah. yeah. Um, Right now, uh, we ex first we expected that this technique will be save water, but um, it turned out that water didn't save that much. It's used the same amount of water, but what yeah, yeah. it save is time. We save about twenty days each crop. That's why the salibu rice uh, ratuning is called uh, seed one. You can harvest three times a year because it cut off the the initial phase that. Uh, used to to between the seeding and uh, be, and and then we we propagate it into the field. So that cut out about twenty days each crop. So we can do more than three times, more than three crop each year. And uh, like I informed you earlier, the genetic modification, um, genetic purification, it uh, is really safe and it's up. Uh, up the value of the seed from this field, from the rice for consume to the rice for seeding class. What's about land preparation? Cost. Land so preparation. preparation? Land preparation cost. Oh, land, land preparation? Salibu. Yeah. Land preparation. Uh, yeah. What's the difference? Um, we do it consecutively for four years now. And the, the soil still doing fine. The the, the land the, that piece of land never stopped doing the uh, the paddy cultivation, because um do we we uh when we cut the the the, the rice ratoon, um everything go back to the rice field. It became a decay and it became self fertilized. So it's kind of sustain this method. This 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 method is I think is is sustainable. Four years okay, now. Thank you, Representative from Thailand. Any thank other you. question? If no other question, I would like Mr. Singh, Mr. Anil from yeah, India. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Yeah. Muhammad. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I will just like to start with the what I had presented in the uh, last meeting when we met. And then I made a presentation yesterday in the symposium about the potential of you know growing rice with drip and uh, we have uh, conducted many experiments further and in addition to the water savings and people have quantified the save savings in water uh, even compared to already wetting and drying and then in addition to that uh, the methane emission was quantified in terms of glo global warming potential uh, savings in energy, savings in labor, uh, and of course, uh, 
ill benefit also. So this uh, presentation I made and that is now being, it has been now evaluated over the uh, farmer's feeds. So I gave a presentation yesterday and that is again uh, one very effective technique as you all know, the irrigation system is the most efficient method of uh, water application. There are a couple of issues uh, which are related because when you're growing rice with the drip, you are actually growing rice in the aerobic conditions. And uh, one has to be careful that uh, about the micronutrient availability uh, because of uh, aerobic conditions, particularly iron deficiency. And then also what happens is that uh, with time, the nematodes also can uh, uh, come up in larger population and affect the cultivation. So this is one or two things which probably need to be addressed uh, when uh, you want to really popularize depregion systems. Uh, but considering the availability of water and the importance of rice in the terms of uh, farmers' income, the food security, as you know, India is, uh, is one country which has a law, uh, Food Security Act, in which everybody below the poverty line is assured of food, you know, uh, by the government's guarantee. So they have to have a buffer stock, which was uh, earlier 40 billion tons for rice and wheat, now it is 65 uh, million tons. So rice has to be produced. I mean, there is no option. And as you all know that it is number one cereal food and 60% of the world food uh, consumption is from rice and rice-based products. Uh, 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 we have mentioned about this uh, uh, food value chain. I would also like to mention that uh, we had already documented one uh, heritage rice production system and it was uh, published in the by the working group two by the Korean uh, uh, committee. And that is the Apatani rice fish system. Uh, it's totally organic and they are getting about five tons uh, of rice production uh, from these fields. And so this has been also documented in one of the heritage systems of rice cultivation. Now I was coming to rice uh, food value chain. Uh, we all know that rice grains are, of course, the staple food. Then in, in case of India, the rice, rice flour is also used for many products and rice puff is an important component of the, as snacks and as a breakfast material in place of the cereals that we generally take. And idli, dosa, noodles are very popular across the country. Uh, they're basically from using, using rice flour. And that is one uh, direct income from which the farmer gets. The other uh, important thing that we are looking because of the amount of rice produced, there is a lot of byproducts also. Uh, rice husk is there, uh, which is, uh, and then rice bran is there, and then even the husk ash is there, and then a lot of rice straw. Uh, this rice straw is being burnt in Haryana and Punjab, those northwest states, which are the rice bowl of the country and contribute to the food security. And that has become a very serious uh, uh, environmental hazard uh, for, uh, for the country and a lot of uh, uh, rules and regulations are being set. So what uh, we are thinking that probably uh, we need to have uh, business models, how to utilize this rice straw so that the farmers are encouraged not to burn it and are able to add to their income. Uh, for uh, and there are many many uses. I know I know if you if I can just permit me one minute, uh, we can probably not only the NPK which are saved when you <coughs> uh, don't burn the rice straw. The rice husk can be used as fuel. You have husk briquettes. You have silicon tetrachloride also from these uh, husks, and you have even there are companies which have made husk boards. Uh, for uh, use as furniture. Then rice bran, as you know, that uh, India is importing a lot of edible oil. So we have uh, edible grade oil uh, from rice bran. We also have industrial grade crude oil, which is possible. Then free fatty acids uh, manufacture and uh, so on. So these are some of the products which if it is utilized properly, the farmer's income would increase. Uh, even the uh, husk ash, is a carrier for biofertilizers and bioorganisms and microorganisms uh, and also activated carbon. Uh, so these are some uh, of the alternative uses of 
the material that is coming from a rice field, because we are talking about the multifunctionality of the fields. And then if you look at the rice straw uses, there are many uses. Uh, mulch is one of the simplest ones. Mushroom production, packing material, briquettes, vermicompost, pellets, paper, and energy production. That is one very important uh, component because a lot of uh, straw is wasted and also animal feed. Uh, basically, but these are all models uh, which have to be converted into a business model so that the farmer is able to take interest and invest to whatever extent is possible. And this uh, is what we are working upon right now, whether we can come up with biomass, these bio business models of a rice straw, this will add to the income. Uh, we are also trying to encourage the farmers, producers, organizations, because in India, more than 86% of the farmers have, are called small and marginal with the uh, farm holding less than two hectares. So they really don't have a lot of uh, resources so can be, uh, and their linkage with the market. So the farmers producer organizations, which the government is encouraging, uh, can do a lot. Uh, a lot of machinery is required to dispose of the straw. So though government is providing a lot of subsidy, but then the farmers are not willing to uh, spend whatever little they have to spend. So we are also thinking of custom hiring centers where the machinery, the machines, the appropriate machines can be made available to the uh, farmers on a normal rent. Uh, now, in addition to this, uh, for business models that I'm talking about as the next phase, what I would like uh, this to be probably a part of the overall recommendation also, that uh, we talk of multifunctionality and ecosystem services, but we do not have a valuation system uh, so, so that it can be converted in economic terms or the financial uh, returns. We know what the ecosystem services are. For example, we know rice, the wetland ecosystem has a much larger biodiversity, you know, compared to a dining ecosystem. It also recharges the groundwater. It also mitigates flood. There are some estimates, but how can we add all those benefits? Uh, and then come up with uh, this valuation should come up with a certain amount of uh, money. Uh, this is what the rice cultivation is adding in addition to the direct, what we call as the provisioning services in the ecosystem services. We all know that whatever rice is produced, it is sold in the market. And that's a benefit which the farmer gets. But uh, rice cultivation, and we have examples in India where when they switch from rice to uh, upland uh, uh, crops uh, in some of these states, there were a lot of uh, flood issue related issues which combined with the climate change. The other thing that we have started also working on is trying to come up with the fortified varieties, you know, biofortified varieties. Uh, because rice is a major crop and a lot of uh, multi uh, micronutrient deficiencies have been recorded. So we are trying to come up with the varieties which have a higher protein percentage and also zinc. Because zinc deficiency is one very important one in our country. Uh, we are also trying to evaluate varieties which are suitable for direct seeded rice uh, machine uh, using machines and also for aerobic conditions so that they can match uh, the uh, the lesser water availability for irrigations. And as a part of uh, climate resilient rice varieties, there are also issues related to uh, pests and diseases. So we are trying to introduce uh, those uh, sort of uh, genes uh, so that rice varieties can tolerate all these uh, uh, and using these genes in those varieties which are being cultivated by the farmers in popularity. And let me uh, underscore that none of them are GM crops. They are all traditional using marker estate selection or things like that, uh, <clears throat> no GM crops. Because, uh, that. So this is uh, in brief what I would like to uh, say about uh, what we have done and what we should be addressing in the next uh, one year. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome, Mr. Singh. So any question to Mrs. Singh's uh, presentation? Dr. Dr. Yazid, I have to announce. Uh, first one is uh, there can be a power transmission failure.
but uh, if it happens, you don't worry. Within one minute time, we will uh, uh, rectify the situation. You, you, you need not worry about it if it happens. But the second thing is, uh, according to the time schedule, we have only another 15 minutes. If there are no questions, uh, please unmute yourself, uh, Dr. Abdullah. Okay, are you listening clearly the question? No, I didn't hear the question, please. Oh, please uh, repeat the, the, the question. Who raised the question? From Sri Lanka. No, they were informing that there is a possibility of a power breakdown. So for a one minute, the power may go, that's all. And they said that within 15 minutes, we have to wind up this particular session. Um, in reply, I have a question. Um, Please go the, ahead. Okay. Um, since we all know that um, we joined ICID um, last two years, right? I, I wonder if uh, we we um, we have anything like for general plan that uh, we have to align with ICID because um, right now what I report here I will report in Morocco as well. So so in general for the BG one, um, you have any mindset or any plan that you you want to uh, relate it to the. I say it is just a question. Thank you. Uh, I would just like to inform that uh, this morning in the inaugural session, Dr. Raghav, who is the president of ICID, you know, he uh, gave one example of a study on drip irrigation in India uh, to illustrate that uh, uh, whether it is it is possible to grow rice uh, with drip irrigation system. Just here for information. Thank you. Okay, Do Do Dr. Yazid. Uh, so before we yes. before we wind up, so we have three more uh, proposals as request, and uh, we are highly concerned about the land classification based on the land suitability and land capability in the in the field of paddy culture, especially for that supports for crop diversification. And second thing is in Sri Lanka, we are still practicing at. Now the, the demand-oriented irrigation system, that time has come for us to turn around towards the, so now we are supply-oriented. I think time has come for us to turn around towards the demand-oriented on-farm water supply management system. Third thing is now the remote sensing is now widely used in India, China, I think they are very well ahead. But we are also looking for the application of uh, remote sensing techniques, especially to assess the, uh, the the status of plants as well as the water in paddy fields. Those are the three main uh, another additions that we would like to uh, propose at this stage. Okay, uh, anyone? Yeah, just one, one comment. comment. Okay. Uh, one comment I'd like to make that uh, uh, in India we are trying to encourage you know crop diversification and somehow reduce the uh, area under rice because the varieties now that we get are yielding uh, higher. But uh, because of the the market, you know, the remuneration, the income that the farmer and the assured income the farmer gets because of the support by the government, they are not uh, very keen to diversify. Uh, from that uh, particularly rice wheat uh, cropping system, uh, which is proven in the country. Uh, yes, I agree with the uh, Sri Lankan colleague that the irrigation system should be supply driven, not the uh, demand driven, not the supply one. Uh, but then it also depends upon wherever they are dependent upon the tubewell uh, for uh, irrigation. They are able, they listen to, to any advice on how to save water. But those where uh, our experience, those where which are being provided water by canals, canals systems run by a roster, you know. So whenever the water is made available, 
they don't care of how much water they are using they were very liberally you know uh, fill their feeds we generally suggest that uh, as has been uh, for uh, using uh, in the new ir irrigation projects they are uh, focusing on using water efficient efficient methods there are uh, a, place, a couple of examples where they are using volumetric water uh, to so to 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 release water on the volume basis that is required that has increased the efficiency uh, i can provide uh, information that they require about the remote sensing application uh, as far as the water resources are concerned uh, that is being done in india that i can provide thank you very much okay i i have a, an opinion on the demand man management and supply management uh, I, i think to have a proper demand manage, management we need a proper measurement for the how much water we deliver to each plot each uh, farm plot and uh, we have targeted certain uh, water level in the paddy field with the possibility of having higher water level for during the rainy hour so so that we can can capture the uh, rainfall in the paddy field but the most important thing it we have higher overflow level as uh, i think japanese prom promoted in their flood mitigation control of paddy field and at the same time we have mechanism to produce uh, to read, uh, deliver water according to daily requirement of each very very that is the the the, the most uh, important if you were to uh, apply real uh, upon uh, uh, demand management in the periphery okay that's what, what we we try to practice in malaysia thank you very much for for, for your comment Okay, we go to last country is Malaysia. So Malaysia, I have sent a report on Malaysian action action plan for 2020. It's actually 2021 to 2022. Sorry, yeah. So we have here one uh, study by Malaysian National Research Institute, namely Khazana Research Institute. It is federal government body. Uh, which is a uh, one of uh, state grc the study is on status of paddy and rice industry in malaysia we can uh, we can realize many dimension of the industry uh, because and also the organization which conducting the research uh, actually this report can be accessed at the kazana research institute website and if possible we will try to link this uh, report to uh, in web so this is the report eh? the report you can see uh, so main uh, main content of the report is uh, on the supply chain of peripheral of paddy paddy production is go to the topics on in chapter 3 supply pit supply chain fund input then in chapter chapter 4 supply chain paddy production number five, chapter 5 supply chain with stream and import so those are the topics that discuss in this report uh, the good thing so is that this uh, this research uh, body is only conducting the issue that very uh, stressing for the country 
So if this uh, body conduct the, the research, they are very, they are very uh, serious about this problem. And uh, I think here we can study first, how this uh, organization will be together in conducting research on uh, food value change in rice and also the interest of the those bodies to the paddy food chain uh, uh, paddy and rice food chain so that is a one of thing that we have uh, we have the report and we would like to uh, dismiss this report to two other countries and number two we, we are starting a study on water management, agriculture water source for Kumubu irrigation scheme and Kumasiswa irrigation scheme in the state of Kelantan and Sungai Pinang irrigation scheme in the state of Penang to determine what ways, how they manage the water resource water source in the Indus uh, scheme, the potential of uh, the, the recycle and other uh, water level management. And also for the working group to uh, those uh, those reports, we uh, especially the report on study on water management, agriculture water source will be helpful in uh, guiding us on the use of water in irrigation system, and especially for the working group three, we have a uh, Purpose study on water use efficiency in two main irrigation schemes in Malaysia. The, sch the scheme are Barat Laut Selangor irrigation scheme in the state of Selangor and uh, irrigation scheme in state Besut irrigation scheme in Terengganu. So those are among several initiatives we, we, we plan for the next, uh, next year after this. So that, that is our presentation here for Malaysia. Okay. Any question? Is this publication on that supply system, is it available on the web? That book that you showed? Which one? That first yes. public, yeah. You, you go to uh, Kazana Research Institute website. Okay. Thank you. This is, the, this is the federal government body under Ministry of uh, Ministry of uh, Ministry of uh, Treasury. Management. Okay. Thank you. I'll be able to look at it. No problem. Thank you. Uh, okay. Please discuss all. Uh, so, if no question, we can try to end our meeting. But before we end the meeting, it is our work here to endorse, endorse, endorse the proposed plan and also endorse the TOR uh, as a as written under The you are at page one of the agenda, which is
So if uh, there is no other to discuss, I would like to end this. And I would thank everyone of you for participation in this session and for your uh, involvement in question to elaborate further what we, ha we have discussed. So if no other question, we end the session. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Abdullah, and yeah. good to see the team from Thailand and Japan. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And uh, before we wind up, I think uh, on behalf of the Sri Lanka InWeb Committee, so I should thank uh, the Thailand, India, uh, Japan, Malaysia, all our friends for part effect participating very effectively and efficiently at, for this session, and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we end the session. Thank you very much.